in the roll call. Thank you. Trustee Villard? Here. Trustee Greg Mazenek? Here. Trustee Dean Popper? Here. Trustee Ramesh Verma present. Uh, Trustee uh, Augusta, she is not here today. Excuse. And, and yes. Trustee mm -hmm. Jeffrey Wood. Jeffrey Wood yes. is not here. Not here. And Peter C. No. Trustee Larry Vallela. Here. And Terry. And another. And Ravina Joshi. Yeah. Joshi. She's, I don't believe she's here this evening. Okay. <clears throat> so we do not have from Jeff as well as from Joshi. And Thank Melissa you. Augusta. Yeah. Well, she told us that she won't yes. be coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And I, did you miss Trustee Mishner? No, no, I said. Oh, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, well, we're glad to hear that. All right. If everyone would please stand and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Thank you. Let's start by taking a look at tonight's agenda. Does anyone have anything they wish to add to it? I'd like to just add on page one where it shows correspondence. There are none. All right. Anything else? If not, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Very good. All right, let's look next at the consent agenda. There are two parts. Again, the approval of claims and warrants and the regular meeting minutes, uh, claims and warrants L564. Anyone have questions or comments on either of those two items? Move that we have a consent agenda. All right. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Very good. <clears throat> Thank you. We do not have any correspondence, but we're very lucky to have two special guests here tonight. So, Julie, would you introduce them? Please? Absolutely. Our first guest is Barbara Kowski. She's the head of the IT department at the library, and she's here this evening to give you an update on the Enable Hands Prosthetic Project that the library has been working in cooperation with the Novi School District, um, specifically the high school. So, Barb, thank you for joining us. me this opportunity to give you an update on the progress that we've made so far on the Enable project. You'll see I gave you, um, they're almost complete. They're, <laughs> they're just missing some of the um, protective padding that goes on the inside and then Velcro straps. But basically that's a completed hand. Um, I'll have to say that this has been a truly tr wonderful partnership between um, the school district and the library. Um, we wouldn't get very many um, hands assembled on our assembly days if it wasn't for the robotics team members. Um, we've been fortunate enough that the Frog Force 503, which is the high school's robotics team, has been wonderful. And I learned something. We have uh, two of seven robotic teams in the middle school and uh, Robo Titans. 1112, which is the year they graduate. No, I'm teasing. And then Ionic Bots. Um, they've been just terrific. Um, I wanted to do a special thank you to Steve Angus, who's the lead adult mentor for all the robotic teams for this Novi um, Enable project. Um, we've So far, we've had assembly days at three of the elementary day, three elementary schools. <coughs> this is for fourth graders. So we've been to Parkview, um, we've been to Village Oaks, we've been to Novi Woods. The kids are fabulous. Um, they're so wanting to, to give back and create and they're just so open about it. it it's, this is just a wonderful project and I'm so happy that I was able to be a part of it. Um, it's a feel good project, everybody wins. Um, we have two more um, assemblies for, uh, let's see, um, Deerfield, 
will be in April, and then in May will be Orchard Hills, or reversed. Orchard Hills in April and Deerfield in May. We've had a few um, assembly days here at the library. Um, this is the first one we had back in December. Um, it was a snow day, so we had a little light attendance, but everyone there was fabulous. Um, we've also done an assembly day for the staff from Community Financial. Um, they were wonderful. They <coughs> produced, I think it was 40 hands, mm -hmm. 20 people, 40 hands. They were there all day. It was great. Um, we've also um, received some wonderful um, publicity. This is an article that was in the Detroit Free Press. We also had um, aired a couple times um, a, a special feature on Channel 7 um, that was filmed at Parkview. Um, and then also in the Novi Today, the winter edition. Um, and that's that actually in your packet tonight, I put it. Yep, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Um, today, we've completed 60, uh, partially assembled, 60, and we have 85 kits ready to assemble, um, which brings us 205. Their uh, target was 200, so I think we're doing good. Um, this, as you know, uh, the library was doing the community portion of this project where the high school was doing um, custom uh, prosthetics. They were um, approached by three different people. This is Mark. He's the father of three. He lives in Arizona, and he asked for an Iron Man themed <laughs> arm. <laughs> Sent us his dimensions. They're working on it. This is just wonderful. Next is Alonzo, um, a teenager from the Detroit uh, metro area, and he refers to his arm already as Pharaoh. I don't know, gold and black. It, it <laughs> looks cool to me. Um, and then, of course, the last one is a, a young boy from the Boston area, and his will be red and blue to resemble Spider-Man. Um, 3D hands are being used everywhere, even here in the States. Um, there we go. Um, we didn't make her hand, but this is Haley Dawson. She's a seven-year-old from North Carolina, and... Her goal is to throw out the first pitch at every major league baseball ballpark with her 3D printed hand. Um, so far, she's done pretty good. Um, <laughs> Tigers, Padres, Nationals, she even was able to um, throw out the first pitch at the 2017 World Series. Um, and of course, all the other teams have issued her um, invitations. And that's about it. Do you, uh, as you can see in front of you, you have one to operate. Um, any questions? Sir. How long does it take to construct one? Um, to print it or to actually put it together? To put uh, it together. To put it together, um, if you're getting good at it, probably about an hour. Um, some of the people that come to our assembly days are a little, take a little longer, like three or four hours. So that's why we have a lot of partials, um, which can be cleaned up no problem. Yes, ma'am. How functional is it beyond cosmetic? <coughs> oh, it's very, I mean, if you can see in one of the photos. I can, how do they move the fingers? It's all just gravity. Yeah. They, um, it goes up to their upper arm, okay. and when they move that, the strings contract. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you press down on the cuff, yes. press down. Yep. Oh, I see. So it's generated at the elbow mm -hmm. level all the way through, and it can actually hold a baseball, or mm -hmm. it can hold like a pencil or a pen. I'm not sure. Uh, pencil. They might be a little bit too small, uh -huh. but definitely a baseball, um, a Barbie doll, <laughs> um, your mom's hand, something. Okay. Thank you. I wanted to ask about age groups. Um, I was curious as to, as far as participation, if you have like an average of the ages that have um, done the community volunteering, and then like, what would you usually look at as the youngest um, person that could get involved in helping? Oh, in helping? Um, I would say about 10. 
unfortunately, uh, the, the smaller folks, they get bored very quickly. Absolutely. They lose interest. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which is why we targeted the fourth grade yeah. when we started the project. The teachers and actually the principals <coughs> at first when we met with them, they thought that would be a good age to actually work with when it came to the project. So around nice. that, yeah, around that nine, ten year old age is what we've tried to do. I do want to make sure that we um, do a shout out to Community Financial Credit Union. They have been very supportive, both monetarily and as you saw from um, from Barb's slides, they actually took part in a, an assembly day. Um, the Rotary has also been very kind with um, donations this year. Um, you have a brochure sitting at your at your place, which I know I had put in the packet earlier, but this is one that if you want to give to someone, you could, and it gives it shows you then who has also been uh, participating. Dremel, obviously our school district, and then the library did receive a very generous gift from um, <coughs> Betty Rankin's family, and it was in honor and memory of her. And that's how we got things going this year. So we've been very, um, we've been very fortunate because mid-year through the year, our 3D printer went on the fritz. Um, the school was great in loaning us some 3D printers so that we could keep things going, but at the same time then we also received a pretty good deal with purchasing some new equipment thanks to these gifts that had been made, these donations. Plus, that's allowed us to keep the filament um, and things like that, materials that we need for the actual hands. Everything that's been donated in terms of money towards the project has gone specifically back to hands or equipment. No staffing or anything like that. So we want to make sure that everybody understands that. And then um, we did see, receive um, a small donation from the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority here in Novi, the Novi chapter. They um, donated 300. Am I taking your speech? No, no, you're, oh, good. Okay. you're good. I'm sorry. I'm like, boy, sorry, I should Barb. have added all that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. You can continue. No, no, I'm done. <laughs> okay, okay. I thought you were, so I just yes. wanted to make sure. So I just want to always make sure that we thank those few groups, you know, that have over the year sure. been, um, you know, very supportive of us. Um, Fenton Lowler is the senior that along with Kirsten Anderson, those were the two students that approached us to do this you know, big project and, and helped us do the launch and, and get things going. And they are the students that continue to get into the schools through this school year. We will lose Fenton um, at the end of the year as he's graduating, but I'm hopeful that Kirsten, who was a uh, junior this year, will continue with maybe continued hands or continued <coughs> ideas so that we can work with the schools and, and continue to see what else can be done um, you know, with their partnership. I know that Steve Angus, who Barb yes. mentioned, um, he's heading up the robotics team for the high school and he has some ideas as well. So we're, we're pretty excited. The next thing to do that's on our radar is to work with Enable and even some other groups so that we can make sure these hands get delivered and they actually do get to those people that need them. And thanks to Rotary, um, we believe we have a connection through Rotary with the Rotary International as well as the Enable Group. So hopefully we'll be able to move these hands through the summer onto in international waters and, and get them to places that need to. What's the them. life of this? How long does this last? How long do the Mark, filaments? You know, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm not mean, really sure. Yeah. I know that um, the reason that they're, they're so popular with the kids is that the kids are constantly growing. Um, it costs thirty dollars to produce that arm, yes. um, compared to three thousand for a professional yeah, um, prosthetic. And I know that it can be reheated, and so you can adjust it yep. if the arm were to, you know, were to grow a little bit or, or you yep. know, get larger or whatever. So you. And so there's padding on the inside. Of it. There, there, there will is. be. Yes, that's the finished product. Mm -hmm. Barb, this is without question. One of my favorite projects. Isn't it? It's wine, too. <laughs> and for all the obvious reasons, it's not only a benefit to the recipient, but the process of getting it there is good for everybody involved. So just want to thank you for your leadership on this. Yes. Well, thank you. This has been a, um, a pleasure to be a part of this. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Okay.
Our next presentation is with Mary Robinson, one of our librarians who loves to dabble in our downloadables. <laughs> so <laughs> I've, I've brought her in this evening because she has a new service that we started and she's here to talk about it so that you yeah. can share it as well. Yeah, and you know, I, I completely recognize that um, the digital uh, way of accessing books and materials isn't for everyone, but I am a convert. And I certainly, um, if I um, have a title that I'm looking for, I will check our digital resources before I will look for print. And I know just from, um, I don't know, the last eight years that we have dived into the digital, um, I hear that repeatedly from our patrons. So I think you're either a convert, you dabble in it, or it's not for you, and that's absolutely fine. That's what the library is about. We want to offer um, options. So um, our newest digital resource um, is called Hoopla, and uh, you might find a card at your seat. Um, this is just a little, uh, just a little card that can get you started and uh, remind you what it's about. Um, so the. Um, so Hoopla is a free digital media service that lets you borrow with your library card ebooks, audiobooks, comic books, mu uh, movies, television shows, and full albums of music. Uh, you can access these on your computer or smartphone or tablet device, Android or Apple. Um, Hoopla's most attractive feature, and this is one of the reasons why we looked into it on top of our other downloadable service, which is called Overdrive, provided through Overdrive, is that um, is that there's no wait to borrow items through Hoopla. It's um, if you see it, you get it. Um, Overdrive kind of mimics our physical library, where we buy titles and copies of titles, and if there is um, numerous people that are interested in that title, sometimes there's a wait. However, with Hoopla, if you see it, you get it. It's kind of a, like a pay, um, almost like pay-per-view, um, or as we call it, cost per cirque. So um, it has a slick, easy to use interface. It's almost foolproof. Um, we're about three months into Hoopla, and the amount of tech support that I need to provide for it is minimal. I really, usually it's um, patron, patron account issues that we have to clear up rather than the actual um, service. Um, you do need to um, have access to Wi-Fi or 3G, 4G um, in order to stream and download the content. Um, but one of the really nice things is um, the library provides that and you can download it. So even if you do not have Wi-Fi at home and you bring your tablet or your device to the library, you can download and um, keep coming back. Of course, we want people to come to the library too. <laughs> um, and then from the library side of things, the support side of things, and um, some of that housekeeping um, is that we are only paying for what our <coughs> patrons use. So if um, so, um, so therefore we aren't uh, weeding out items and things aren't sitting on the, the shelf, so to speak. I know this is all uh, um, virtual, but um, so we don't pay unless it's used. It really is truly um, um, you know customer driven service. So those were some of the attractive qualities about Hoopla. We started hearing from our patrons a probably a year before we signed on, when are you gonna get this hoopla, you know? So we really had to take it seriously, even though we did have Overdrive, which is a great and robust um, downloadable service that offers some options that Hoopla doesn't. But we had to take it seriously, so um, we jumped in. And um, so I just wanted to give you um, a brief overview of how easy it is to access it. Um, so, um, from our homepage, you can go to the downloadable media area where you see all of our wonderful services and Hoopla is featured prominently. So um, I'm already signed in, but uh, it has a simple interface for signing in and setting up an account. Um, you just need an email address and your library card essentially. So once you're in, um, it you have a, a home page, uh, so to speak. Um, it is mimicked 
on the mobile app to some extent. I don't know if you can see this well enough that what you're seeing on the web page is also what you're seeing on the mobile app. Um, and they, um, they uh, sync seamlessly between the two. So I have a couple items checked out. Um, currently, Novi Public Library lets each card holder um, have four checkouts a month. This will change um, at the beginning of the next fiscal year. Um, but uh, we are finding <coughs> that um, this has been working pretty well. We have not heard too many complaints. I, t generally, our, um, our video and TV show viewers mm -hmm. uh, would like more checkouts because you check out one TV show um, at a time. So you can go <coughs> through those four pretty quickly. Our and audio if you're book, a binger. Yes, right, <laughs> right. Yes. We all have become a, co yes. a culture of binge watching, right? Right. So, but come July, we should be able to take care of our binge washer watchers. <laughs> so, um, you can search fairly easily. Um, it uh, it breaks it down by format, and then you can also uh, once you're in those formats. I'm just going to go to audiobooks. Did you know that audiobooks are almost exceeding ebooks for yes. popular yes. Mm -hmm. use? I actually put it in the article. That we, oh, did you? Yes. Okay. Into their packet yeah. tonight. So. Yeah. And you know, Hoopla's strength is in audiobooks, um, and uh, so I think our we will really um, be able to satisfy our audiobook users. Um, so uh, again, you can search by categories. It really breaks it down nicely for you. But you have a simple search option if you know a title that you're interested in. Um, and let's just go to one of the popular ones that's available. So it's as easy as um, if you see a title you're interested in, uh, you just click borrow and it's yours. So, um, and, uh, so you can, I don't know if the speakers, what they're like on here. But it's as easy as borrowing and playing. My speakers might not be shown, uh, um, hooked up here. I didn't check that in advance, but um, it should be here on my. And that's tab. definitely uh, that whole process has become more seamless. I would yeah. love to. So. Yep. <laughs> Because I remember when we first started all of this process, it was pretty clunky, and now yes. they keep, you know, they keep making it easier for it the is. user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the bulk of this is streaming at this time, um, but you can download. So if you're traveling, which um, I know several are, uh, folks from Novi will be on spring break next week, so um, during your travels, rather than filling your suitcase with all the books that you want to read at the beach. Just take your tablet or device and, you know, load it up. Um, so let's see what else. Um, but, yeah, you, you do have a download option and not just streaming. Um, so the, the basic details to um, remember, and this is very similar to our um, physical collection and overdrive, so I don't think there's going to be that much confusion. But ebooks and audiobooks and um, comics check out for 21 days. And if you don't finish it, you just check it out again if you have some checkouts available. Um, music is seven days a week. That mimics our um, physical collection. Um, videos are three days, um, which does not mimic our collection. But uh, I think most uh, movie watchers usually take care of that within three days. So again, there's no renewals. You just check it out. You'll never have overdue items. You'll never have the potential to uh, lose or damage your item, and uh, no holds mean no wait. So, um, and they're also Hoopla, another big sell for them is they're delving into um, like the casting devices, Chromecast. You can put it on your Roku, your <laughs> Apple TV, your Amazon Fire TV. So they're really um, working hard to make their product accessible. Um, there's also many tutorials. Um, at, so as for staffing, it's been great to get um, our staff up to speed so that they can assist patrons. And again, I, I think um, I maybe in the last three months have heard from two or three people that have had difficulties with this. Unlike 
overdrive where we really had issues at the beginning. It's, it's getting better, but uh, um, so, and I just wanted to give you a few stats. Um, we, we soft launched this. I don't know if that was something that was discussed here, but it was purposely soft launched because we weren't fully budgeted until the, the new fiscal year. So considering that we only have signage in-house and word of mouth, um, so since uh, we started January 1st, um, 350 patrons have borrowed 914 unique titles. Um, and I just got these stats re right before I came here, so we're right up to um, And uh, we, as, um, and our, uh, um, our numbers continue to increase. Um, patrons borrowing items from January, we had about 137 patrons borrowing. In the month of February, 159. I don't have March yet because we haven't finished the month yet. Um, and then for CIRCs, we did even better. So people are using those four checkouts. Uh, January, uh, there were 275 <coughs> checkouts. Um, February um, increased by almost 100 by, with uh, 356. And again, we're seeing audiobooks <coughs> as our highest CIRCing format, which is really not much of a surprise, and adult fiction, which again is not too surprising. So anyways, I hope you will take the opportunity to explore Hoopla, and please let me know if you have any questions. I would love to answer them. I, I have a couple questions. Yeah, sure. What's the cost for the app? Sure. It's free. It's mm -hmm. free. Um, and then what is the source of the selections sure. made for the books and yeah. audio? It's, um, it's kind of like Netflix, if you're familiar with that. Some things, they come and go. So uh, this is always going to be a changing dynamic collection. There will be a lot of permanent, but um, they add weekly. Sometime, and this is all based on uh, negotiations with the publishers. Right. Um, you know, uh, ever since libraries went digital, it's been a big <coughs> hurdle because publishers were afraid mm -hmm. to give digital content to us. Um, and we've made, um, We've come a long way. I think they've realized that libraries are helping their sales. Um, you're getting these items in people's hands, and the numbers are showing that they are uh, uh, consumers are then purchasing. So libraries are not a hindrance any longer, or as they perceived it. Um, so, but for Hoopla, um, they add content weekly. Um, sometimes things will go away, but they will give us a notification. So if there is a a genre you're interested in, an author, um, on your splash page, your home page, you'll get some kind of notification that certain content may be leading. It could come back, but uh, there is notification. Um, so is that answering your it question? It does, and then I just have one mm -hmm. final. I was wondering if the highlighting of herding cats was related to a presentation to the board. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> she chooses not to answer that. I think. Yes, hi, well, Hi. Well, many of you don't know, but um, this lovely lady got me set up a little bit because I yeah, yeah. Um, didn't know what I was doing. And she quickly like did it in five seconds. I was like, ah, oh, okay. So you did it again because while yes. you were talking, I'm listening. Did and you get hoopla on I'm signed up. I'm okay. sitting here. So yeah. yay. And they have Sesame Street, so I'm set in my life. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah so thank you. The question for yes. you. Um, so do you feel like we're going to still keep both systems right yes. now? Yes. Um, currently, Overdrive is the only um, lender for libraries or um, digital um, uh, resource for libraries that works with Amazon Kindle. So I don't see Overdrive going away. A huge amount of our users still are uh, Kindle e-readers. So supplementary and kind of a nice yes. little extra. Yeah, yeah. There, they, um, uh, there's a lot of content that you won't find in um, Hoopla that you'll find in Overdrive and vice versa. Nice. Um, once our new cataloging system comes up, um, going through the catalog will be a great way to um, kind of do your one-stop shopping. Right now, you are sort of visiting two different apps, which I, I, I concede it's clunky, you know. Um, but we are kind of an app culture now, so yeah. I don't think people 
kick and scream too much, but using our catalog and the way it will integrate, I think will um, be very helpful. And you mentioned that you did a soft launch. How did you yeah, do that? So um, we just had signage in the library um, on both floors and uh, in sort of our download area and um, have handouts. And then um, we got the information on the website. So um, as you saw when we yeah. navigated. And, um, and then word of mouth. So, nice. um, and again, we had um, people knocking on our door before we started this. So <laughs> we almost had a built-in audience to begin. That's great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, very much. Mary, Mary, you were with us in the old library building? I sure was. I'm going on I just want to years. remind you, if you still remember, <laughs> yeah. when we were moving to the new building, yeah. you said, I have been working on this uh, kitchen block board as my desk. <laughs> I said you will have a new desk. Yes, there. I do have a new desk. <laughs> Thank you. <I laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I I sat at a desk with Margie. Margie and I basically shared a space where our chairs touched each other, <laughs> and it was sort of like Margie, I need to get up so she could <laughs> move close to her desk, and I would get up, and vice versa. So we were kind of we had a lot of fun though. But yeah, I remember my kitchen table. You're comfortable table. now. <laughs> yes, and look at me now. <laughs> Good, thank you. Yeah, anybody else? And if you think of anything, um, and I am always telling the staff, you know, I really do love this stuff, and I would love to meet with you and help you bring your devices in. Um, I really enjoy working with patrons. I, it's that reward aspect of our jobs. When you see this immediate, like, oh my gosh, that really worked. <laughs> and it's, uh, I, I sort of equate it like magic. I mean, it's the only time I will make a book appear, <laughs> you know, <laughs> out of thin air. <laughs> so. <laughs> I can vouch for her. She's fast. Aww. She did it so quickly. I was like, I'd be here for two hours. So. Oh, well, it's, it's all practice. You know. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you Mary. for the opportunity thank to you. be there. Yeah. Thanks not only for the presentation, oh, but yeah. for helping us to stay as close to the front edge of all oh, this yeah. technology that's going on. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. We're always looking for ways to help Great. people get their resources. We tend to send Mary to the um, digital, it's called Digipalooza. Yeah. Uh, we <laughs> tend to send her to that conference <laughs> because we it's know a, that that's where her, her yeah, heart it's is. it's an international conference mm -hmm. that... Um, that's great networking, and it's seeing a lot of librarians in a lot of different fields um, in action with this stuff, because um, it, it really can serve a lot of needs, the digital resources. And as you know, we, we made a, a, a huge move from some print money into electronic this year coming up for the 18, 19 years. So you'll see that thanks to Mary driving this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, this thank you. Yep. Thank, thank you. you so much. We have come to the first of two opportunities for public comment. In order to hear all citizen comments at a reasonable hour, the board requests that speakers respect a five minute time limit. This is not a question and answer session, therefore board members will not respond to any questions. It is an opportunity to voice your thoughts with the Novi Public Library Board of Trustees. Seeing no one coming forward, we will move on to the student representative report. For the February student representative report, for the programs, the Get Cracking on Code Coding Club program took place on January 10th. Accelerate Kid educated and taught participants about <coughs> computer programming and game design. Attendees also learned about computer science with BitsBox to program video app games using JavaScript programming language. The attendance for that was 23. The Nerf Night program took place on February 23rd. IMA Sports Novi ran Nerf games and other library staff ran VR simultaneously. Pizza and ice cream were served. The attendance for that was 11. The Pizza and Pages book club took place on February 27th. Attendees read the book Treasure Hunters by James Patterson. The purpose of this book club is to encourage tweens to read and also allow tweens to practice for the Battle of the Books program that the library holds annually. Attendance for that was seven. 
For the Teen Space update, there were 650 <coughs> attendees in Teen Space in the month of February. Teen Space was closed on February 9th because of the NPL closure due to inclement weather. Teen Space was also closed on February 19th and February 20th due to midwinter break. VR was held in Teen Space on February 8th and February 22nd. A Valentine's Day party was held in Teen Space on February 14th. The total from September 2017 to Febru February 2018 uh, for the attendees in Teen Space is 4,491, and you can see the breakdown there. For the Teen Advisory Board update, the sixth Teen Advisory Board meeting of the year took place on February 16th. At this meeting, members enjoyed cookies, pretzel sticks, and s'mores. Then, members shared ideas on community service projects that TAB can do to interact with the community. Finally, Information Services Librarian, Lindsay Fricke, introduced the top 10 titles selected by the Young Adult Library Services <coughs> Association. Members then looked at titles from the whole list of top books of 2017 and worked on a project to be displayed in the Teen Stop. The attendance for that was 25. For the upcoming programs, there is the Demolition Derby with Miniature Motorways on April 4th, the SCORE Business Mentoring for Teens on April 11th, the Get Cracking on Code Coding Club on April 11th, the Art of Improvisation with Karen Bell Brage on April 11th, the Extreme Reality STEM Workshop on April 17th, the Teen Advisory Board meeting on April 20th, the Pizza and Pages Book Club on April 24th, and the Tween National Geography Bee on April 25th. And for the caption for the picture, teens test their skill and aim at Nerf Night at the library. Any questions? Sounds like we had a fun time. Yep. <laughs> I have a question. Is that Coding Club, is that monthly? Um, that you're having, I saw that you had last month and next month. Yes, or is that just, I believe so. so you, yeah. you do have it every month then? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I know you have a break for the next week, so enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Very good. Moving on to the president's report, we will be doing the goal update next month as we do it quarterly, as everyone remembers. Musty Verma, would you like to introduce the proposed slate of officers that you've been able to put together? Thank you, Mr. President. I have a... Uh, uh, placed one um, slate for the next years. Um, the proposed slate is, proposed slate is resident as Tara Mishner, Vice President Ramesh Verma, and Treer Melissa Augusta, and Secretary Bill Lawler. And this is uh, the slate I'm presenting to the board, and I'm asking the members, if they have any question or comments, please let me know. Does anyone have any comments or questions for Ramesh? If I think it's appropriate that, that we do, you know, rotate the positions. I think the, the leadership of the board has been outstanding in the three years that I've been on the board, uh, in every position. However, I think there are a lot of benefits to, to rotating the positions <coughs> periodically, so I'm in favor of it. Thank you. So, if there's no questions, I'm proposing that the slate should be adopted. A second. And then, the next uh, month, the new board will take over as President Tara Mishner, Vice President Mesh Verma, Treyer Melissa Gosta, and Secretary Bill Lawler. Very good. We have a motion. I'll second it. I second it already. Uh, I'll third it. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Congratulations to everyone elected. Well, I, I have to say, you know, I can't not say something. Um, three of the four um, uh, positions that we have just voted for held different positions last year, so that they've, you know, kind of like moving through it. So we're welcoming Bill to the four. But um, Craig, I just kind of have to say that um, you know your uh, presidency has been inviting, engaging, 
and setting a tone for collegiality and coming together. And you've handled well several issues in which we have had strong differences of opinion on the board, and you've always been masterful, I think, in, in pulling it to consensus. You also, I think, are a person who walks his talk. You know, very often your presence is quiet, uh, but nonetheless it's also potent in that we know you're there and you're going to follow through. So you spent a lot of time, you know, being president of this board and have made many contributions. And um, I, for one, have appreciated it. And I've been honored to be able to sit next to you during this time and look forward to Tara coming in and support Bill's statement that rotating of um, membership and uh, leadership roles is important. And you've set that tone, I think, of openness. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. It's, uh, I'm glad we've got the same board back again. Uh, three people got reappointed. It's been a fun board to work with. It's diverse. We have a lot of different perspectives on things, and I think that's very beneficial to us, the mm -hmm. library, and the community. So uh, thank you. If I can add just a comment, that would be that, you know, you don't all get called as much as Craig does. Yes. And um, yes. he's always, you know, the yes. first one that I touch base with if there's something that has come up or, you know, to bounce something off. And I want to thank you for that because you are regularly available to me um, when I need an email or need to meet. And I know you've also taken part in many of our committees, mm -hmm. um, standing and being involved just so that you're aware of what's going on behind the scenes and what's going on with the board. And I thank you for that as well. Well, thank you. It's been an yes. honor to, to be involved. Can I, can I piggyback? Sure. This is, this is kind <laughs> of so, um, so I always call, I, I don't, I haven't called him Craig in like two years because I always call him Mr. President. <laughs> and I mean that. I would not say it if I didn't feel that in my heart. Trust me. Probably know that. Um, but I really do think, I echo everything that Julie and Doreen said. And um, I've had the pleasure of, of knowing his other half. So I knew immediately, uh, Mary Beth, um, so I knew immediately that he was going to be great to work with when I got appointed. She's like, oh, my husband's on the board. And just, you, like, I, I entered this board, um, I was the only woman at the time when I came on, um, and, and I, I felt very welcomed by you. I felt very appreciated by you. I didn't feel like, um, I don't know how to say it. Like, I, I guess that um, I felt like you had full confidence in whatever I could bring to the table. And sometimes when you come into something new, rightfully so, people, you know, have you hold back a little bit because it, you don't know yet, but you never treated me that way. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that. And I think everybody probably sees that. It's, I realize I'm not special in that. You treat everybody in that way. And I think there's something to be said for that. Well, everybody feels you. special. Thank and it's like, oh, you too? Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I appreciate everyone's comments. Uh, moving on to the treasurer's report. Uh, Trustee Augusta is not able to make the meeting, so I'm going to walk everyone through the numbers. You'll see that you have a, a corrected sheet in front of you. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I won't work off of that. There's just a minor difference, and um, I can point it out. We're going to start talking about Fund 268. So if you look at page 18 to 20, the budget for 268 is on those pages. Um, if you turn to page 20, you'll see the, I guess the first orange column, if you will, is the 2017-18 approved budget. You'll see that we've got, if you look at the whole report, budgeted revenues of $2,901,020 budgeted expenditures of $3,032,496, indicating a fund usage of 131476 If you turn to the revenue and expenditure report, which is pages 22 through 26, you'll be able to see what we've actually uh, received and spent. On page 26, you'll see year-to-date revenue uh, all about a third of the way down, third column from the right, year-to-date revenue of 2875221 which would be, if you go back and look at what we budgeted, year-to-date we're about $26,000 short of what we budgeted. In all likelihood, we'll make that up over the remaining four months with 
fines and rental money from the meeting rooms. Um, if you look at year-to-date expenditures, it's a million seven eighty nine seven twenty four. Again, I'm on page twenty five. Um, so our net of revenue and expenditures to date is a million zero eighty five four ninety six. And again, you'll see that about a third of the way down. We have um, we have spent to date a million two forty two seven seventy one less than what we had budgeted for expenditures with four months to go. Our net of revenue and expenditures um, year to date is a million zero eighty five four ninety six. Thus, if in the next four months our expenses are less than a million eighty five four ninety six, we will not dip into our fund balance, but in fact <coughs> would break even at that amount. My guess, best guess now is that we will be slightly positive when we get to the end of the year. Um, and considering we had budgeted a usage of 131, that's a good turnaround. Right. Well done, Julie. Yes. Um, the balance sheet for Fund 268 is on page 26. You'll see our current fund balance is 2,919,823 at the bottom. That's where it stands now. Obviously, over the next four months, that will be reduced as we incur expenditures. As you all remember, almost all of our revenue comes in early in the year, so revenues won't be going up much. But that's where we're at right now, $2,009,000 um, as, as of the end of last month. Before I move on to 269, any questions on Fund 268? Okay. Fund 269, let's look at the budget on page 21. If you look at the 2000, the column headed 2017-18 amended, you'll see mm -hmm. th that um, we had a beginning balance shown there of a million six seventy nine eight oh two. We had budgeted for expenditure for revenues of forty eight thousand five hundred, of expenditures of one hundred forty thousand nine sixty five indicating a fund usage of 92465 which would leave a balance of 1,587,000. So that's what was budgeted. If you look at page 25, you will, at the bottom half of that, see the summary of year-to-date revenue and expenditures for Fund 269, and you'll see revenue um, $33,289 and expenditures of 23259 so we are net positive through eight months. The balance sheet for Fund 269 is on page 27. And again, if you look down towards the bottom, you'll see the current fund balance of 1,707. As you all recall, Fund 269 has a lot of projects um, for, for major expenditures. So the timing of those and whether or not we do them is what kind of varies from the budget. So at this point in time, we seem to be in, in good shape on both Fund 268 and 269. If I can just add, I know that there was a question both from you, President um, Messerneck, and um, Treasurer Augusta last month about a couple figures. I have reached out to the city, and I'm working to see if we can get some of those answers to questions okay. that you had. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, if there's no questions on that, we'll go to the director's report. Okay, um, so last month we had been talking a little bit about personnel and there was a question from, from the board about you know, where we fit, Novi, in terms of some other libraries locally that I would consider as um, uh, competitors of ours. So I provided some information to you on page 28 just so you could see um, how they tend to spend their personnel in regards to, in, in relation to their fuller budget. So live for Novi, which I highlighted in yellow for you, um, for the new budget for 1819, I gave you this percentage that we, we would think about 63% of our budget would be spent um, specifically on personnel. 
And so you can see other libraries that um, compare some higher, some lower than us, and then the average. I just I know that that was just a question of where do we fall in, in comparison to others. Um, below that, there's just uh, some information about where I've been with um, in and out of the the um, community and with the profession. I want to thank you all for your support of me attending the Public Library Association conference, which was last week. Um, I had the privilege of taking April, uh, April Stevenson, who is our head of information services, and two librarians, Jesse Shank and Kathleen Alberga. Um, they're putting together reports. In fact, two have already sent them to me. You'll see them next month, so you can see some of the topics and what they learned from the conference. But it was amazing. We did make it. We, we were not stuck. Some of our colleagues, um, unfortunately, did not get out of Detroit and did not make it to the conference, but we did. And I think a, a few things that, that resonated with me, one was strategic planning. That was one of the reasons why I went, and I was able to attend three different sessions on strategic planning. I have some new ideas, and I was able to also connect with a couple library colleagues in Michigan, and they're going to be sharing some strategic plans that they have that are different. Um, than ours, so it's you know it's nice to see um, fresh ideas and, and new ways of thinking, and then also went to um, a session on the library fines and looking at that as potentially it not having them anymore and that being a barrier to some of our patrons and patrons who might not be coming back to our library <coughs> because they're embarrassed that they owe or that they, you know, that they have owed in the past. So it was a real interesting, I know I've brought that topic up to you in the past um, before, and you'd be surprised to know how many large libraries have gone away with that whole concept. So it is something I would like to look further into and we'll, and we'll look at this year. Um, but, you know, listening to authors, and which is always wonderful. I love when I can connect with someone who's actually written the book, it's nothing's, cooler than that. And then I did send you all a text and sent you a photo of me in front of the Lending Library um, kiosk that we hope to purchase um, next year so that you can see it and the size of it. That's the actual size. It is bigger than the one that we had um, planned for, but I think it's going to be more exciting and it brings more to our community by having that type of system. It's literally almost like a little branch. So you can place holds, you can make returns, um, you're able to um, sort through the materials and look through them to choose which one you want, um, which I know was a big, a big deal when we first started talking about this. So um, the company is excited to be working with us. Right now we would be um, the first in Michigan. Um, I am aware that, I, I can't remember if it's Indiana or Illinois, it is one of those I states right by us, um, that they have started talking to the same company and might be putting one in as well. And I don't know if they'll get theirs in before ours. We are waiting on the park and, and that development. But um, they're very excited to be working with us and um, to, to have their product, if they can, put in, putting it in in the next, next year. So very exciting. If we thought about putting it in uh, Pavilion Shores, if uh, while we're waiting on the um, lake you're, side? You're not going to be able to move it like you would be able to the, okay, the first, okay. right. This is going to be more of a permanent. So gotcha. I'd like to wait to see how those plans, um, you know, evolve. Because I know they haven't decided on anything. If we find that maybe it's not going to work, may, we would, you know, either look for a new location or, or make a different decision. But at this time, I think I would wait. Mm -hmm. so they're not designing it yet? They, they had a design and then they had to go back and there were some changes and some questions and, and comments and concerns from the community. So they're still doing some more development. So when they have designed, so this dimension of this particular item is all, there? All of that information has already been sent to the city and to the Parks and Rec Department and those that are working with the architects for the design. Thank yes. Mm -hmm. Julie, were there any discussions about cost-cutting measures and balancing the budget and, and, and that sort of thing that, that we've talked about recently? Not really on, in terms of topics like that for me to attend, there, there wasn't. Um, there was one on, uh, that I attended that was on friends and foundations. And, you know, that is on our radar and we've been talking about that. So that was actually a really good um, session. And it, they talked about, actually, 
libraries that have worked with their friends to build a foundation and libraries that have gone separate with a foundation and still have a friends group and how those work. So there's, there's different options and um, that's something that I want to get us back on the radar for for this year, knowing that we have that wonderful um, donation mm -hmm. or promise, I should say. Yeah. But in terms of budgeting, not specific to that. Any other questions about that? Okay. Moving on. There's a few things I put in the packet this time just for reading pleasure. Um, page 29 was an email from uh, the Library of Michigan and Sonia Norris. Um, just, you know, MELCAD is another option for our, our library patrons of where they can get books if they're not here in, if they're not in our building and if you can't find it in our consortium, you can go to the state and, and you know, lend from there as well. They will try and get materials from you from other libraries across the state. And that's what MELCAT is. It's, a, it's like a world catalog. Um, so there was some, just some great data. Um, you know, they're celebrating MELCAT and it being 10, 10 millionth requests. So obviously this is just as um, used as, you know, across the state as our own, our own similar ones. But it's... Um, it's been a great source to have for something that might not be in our local public collections. Um, as you move on to page 30 and 31, this is uh, the food service report that we typically get two to three times a year from our cafe. Um, there was nothing uh, too glaring in here from the report, so <coughs> things are, are looking good. Page uh, 32 is some information about the building formula that will go into effect for the new um, ILS system that we're going to be putting in in May. I'm happy to tell you that if you look at the very last bullet, you know, what does this mean for Novi Library? It is an increase of about 16%, but I want to um, assure all of you that I put in um, a budget of about 60000 for this year, and we're, we'll be close to that budget um, figure. So it's, it's not too... Um, too much and too shocking. They uh, did go to a new billing and formulas and obviously usage, which we are um, one of the biggest libraries in the consortium. So they've had to do, you know, they've had to look at things a little differently, and, and I, I completely understand that and support it as well. Um, also, just to, you know, top uh, or to add on to what Mary Robinson was talking about <coughs> on page 33 is a uh, Pew Research article that came through that I wanted to share with you about audiobooks, and obviously this kind of sets to um, how the usage has been going, and it definitely is becoming more popular, our audiobook um, users. We'll come back to the policy information that I have in your packet tonight um, when we get to that point. Page 43, and I know we'll discuss this as well, but this is, um, as we move forward with the LED project, um, this was an additional service fee per hour that uh, Illuminard is providing to us that we will look to approve tonight so that we can move forward with getting some of their, um, some of their um, consulting, continue some consulting with them. Page 45, these are anniversaries that are being celebrated for March. Um, Yolanta Boric is 11 years. Marianne Zermulin is seven. Um, Catherine Coppin is one year. Jean Aldrich is one year. And Hillary Henschel is one year. The first four uh, ladies mentioned are from our support services team, and Hillary is from our information services team. It seems like Marianne just got here in a I know. Years. <laughs> I know, it goes by fast. I just had a quick note, and I'm sure I could like say this after too, but why not? I wonder if there's a way that we can, um, super simple, like, and I can even buy it, like a card where all of us sign for each anniversary, like, make that a tradition. Sure. From we can the do board, that. though. Sure. I think it's a nice rapport okay. builder. Just we can, like, yep, I can have that um, come through the admin office, and Julie can bring them each month, and we can do that. Okay. Okay. Yep. So the library staff is going to provide the board with cards that we sign to give back to the staff. Oh, I would rather buy, I can buy it. The, it would be nice if it came from the board. So it's I'd coming from, okay. I think that's I kind of a nice would, thing, like that's smart, you know? Okay. I mean, that is pretty cheap, right? We, we welcome, we yeah. welcome you to do that, and then we can donation. deliver them. Well, and I'll contribute. <laughs> yeah, I'll okay. Contribute. Okay. Well, this, so if you want to start next month, yeah. you'll have this in advance. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, following on page 46, this is the promotional material, uh, promotional information about Tom Sharp coming back. Um, he'll be kicking off 
our National Library Week um, celebration on April 8th from 3 to 4. He will have a concert at the library. Um, this flyer was put in, and then we got a wonderful sponsorship from Baronet Hotel here in town. They're actually going to be putting Tom up all week because he is going to be uh, going to Hickory Woods. He's going to be at Fox Run. Wow. So he's he's doing the Novi Circuit. Mm -hmm. And thanks to Baronet, they worked with us Goodness. so that he could stay in town. Um, he's also going to be going to the Ypsilanti District Library through our partnership. We were able to get him another library gig um, while he's in Michigan that week. <clears throat> um, you've seen the information about the Novi uh, Lends a Hand article, so that's on page 47 and 48. And then following are the reports from Barb Rakowski on page 49. Um, just some updates from Keith Perfect, new things that I wanted to highlight to you on page 50. Page 51 is April Stevenson's report for information services. I always like to highlight on page uh, 52 the um, thousand books before kindergarten. We're at a total of 673 children that are, are participating, um, or as you can see, 23 have finished um, for this. Um, Christina went this week and attended the Goddard School, no, I'm sorry, the Rainbow Preschool that's um, just opened. They had a ribbon cutting, another preschool and daycare facility that's opening in the community. So we're very excited about these new establishments and being able to make connections with them. And then on page uh, 54 is Marianne Zermulin's report for support services. As you can see, library cards issued were 306. Um, this month and you know 55,000 items checked out we for the winter months sometimes it goes down a little bit and but yet we're staying um, pretty strong and then it goes into our statistics there wasn't anything really um, uh, pressing to point out to you at this time in terms of stats and those go through to page I have a, a yes, question on absolutely. statistics um, which page are you on I'm on uh, did you, did you I just don't see the number. It's the one with the statistics, the support services by yes. department, page 54. Sure. Um, is there any way to know how Hoopla is being used? Like how many books are checked out, if you would, uh, on so that Mary, or audio? So Mary Revson provided for you so far. Right. In terms of, if you look on, it won't be specific to just, I, I can have her on page 61. Actually, Hoopla's mentioned. She did put it in. Oh, is it? If you okay. Look, yep. yeah, I didn't Page get 61. That Thank she you. did add All right. it. Mm -hmm. Answer. So, Question yep, answer. January and February stats are there. Thank you. You're welcome. And then moving on to our friends report from November, because they've had some meetings that they didn't have um, through the winter. This is from November. They just came back. Um, this is their November meeting, and they are doing well. I know that they. Um, they did give their scholarship award um, on Wednesday, so they had a student that received a scholarship. They'll be recognizing that student at a future meeting, probably um, probably their April meeting. I would get April or May. Okay. And then uh, Nova Historical Commission, their January minutes are also um, inside. Nothing major there to point out. They did approve their budget. And if you look on page 68, you will see that uh, still keeping to $14,000, and it's broken um, broken down by different categories. Um, special projects. I know they're they're looking at some um, uh, they're looking at some veteran um, potential work and recognizing ve um, recognizing veterans. Um, so maybe a marker, things like that, and that's um, that's going on. I'll have more details as that as that, those details come available. Um, and then you have your calendar on the last page. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Yes. <coughs> Trustee Berman. Page 43. Okay. Night. He says principal lighting designer $150, but it didn't say that how much extra they will be asking. Not, no, they haven't. And they not actually, to exceed. right, I put in a not to exceed because we have a budget that we can't exceed. So I've put in that. To put in that where? Are you telling him? I put in a motion, if you look for on the agenda tonight, for when we talk about that particular um, on page three. Yep, page Five. three. Uh, C under matters for board action. We cannot exceed 15 hours. So 15 hours for the extra work plus yes, which will be 20. he already owes 
he's already but that is already taken care of that first uh, 7500 correct no uh, your punch list is not done some of the work is not done out of 7500 that wasn't that right though that won't be part of it he won't be charging us for that i mean that's that's not going to be extra no, the work point i'm saying this is an open letter to him i'm saying not to exceed which how much money we, is we won't exceed 2250 2250 2250 which Excellent. i don't even think we will need 15 hours now, have you written to him not yet so what you are are you telling him not to exceed 22 or you are asking him to say that i'm going to I'm telling you to approve not to exceed 15 no, no. hours. But I'm sorry, the designer has to tell you not to exceed so much. Well, we have, he can't because we have some numbers we can't go over with the city. The point I'm saying is we are buying something from him. Mm -hmm. He says I'm charging, first thing is $150. Right. He's charging too much to us. I'm telling you. He's not at that uh, capable of uh, uh, principal designer or whatever. Okay. But the point is, you have $7,500, out of $7,500, you might be having $1,000 or $1,500 balance out of that money. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm asking him, that money plus how much extra he's asking, not to exceed that much. He has to write that personally. Okay. This is your asking us, the board, that you, you might have that much money. But right. the designer has to tell you that. This, this is an open letter to us. He can go 1,000, he can go 10,000. Well, he won't because <laughs> I'll no, be letting What go. I'm saying, you had to get it writing. <laughs> yes, okay. This I can do letter, that. This I won't be signing anything until... But this letter is not right, and please tell him... You were looking for price. That This letter states the price he will charge us per hour. That's yeah. what you were looking no, for. No, per hour. Yeah. First time I'm saying this, he's a principal designer there, and I, I, I forget about that. But the point I'm asking, <laughs> we need a letter from that Peter Basso telling us the balance of the work. Your crew is doing the job. We have a balance so much from the old contract, and the balance will be so much not to exceed. So we have to have a letter like that. Okay. Am I asking something different? What no, I understand thinking? exactly what you're asking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because we, we cannot go with the open letter like this. Okay. Anything else from Julie's report? Okay. If not, we'll kind of quickly go through the committee reports. Um, mm -hmm. Trustee Verme, you want to talk about the HR committee and what you've been doing? Uh, we, we are we meeting again now? Uh, well, in terms of the salaries, um, I finally have all of the salary information in terms of the <coughs> charts and the new structure. Worked with the city um, to get that information. I'll be bringing it to the April meeting for the board to see and to consider for approval. Um, both uh, Trustee Michener and Trustee Verma have met with me, reviewed those charts, and they're ready to come forward. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. Thank you. Um, Finance Committee, as you'll see there, uh, we're going to be having a meeting to talk about some purchasing policy. Yes. There's really no news yet other than we'll be getting together on that subject. Um, on events and marketing, um, you'll see there we had nice representation at three events over the past month or so. The State of the City Address, the and Green Gala, and the Battle of the Books. And thanks to the, the folks that showed up for that. Um, building and landscape. Um, try to make a long story short. We put the the project out for bid. As everyone knows, uh, we had several. We had 13 people, companies, come in to take a look at it. Um, only one of those companies submitted a bid. That bid was uh, quite a bit higher than what we had budgeted for, so we did not accept it. There was a segment as we had the bids broken out, or the, you know, the bids broken out in a couple different areas. Uh, we asked that vendor if he would do the parking lot as he had quoted on, and because it was a small job, he was not interested. So we had a couple meetings and tried to figure out what made the most sense to move forward. 
we came to the conclusion that a fair amount of the work that needed to be done, we actually had the capability of doing it internally, essentially swapping out bulbs and in some cases swapping out ballasts. So a uh, meeting was held with Keith, who has been actually doing swapping bulbs and swapping ballasts, um, to talk to him about seeking his interest in, in working on this at um, some overtime with some additional pay for him. Uh, he was interested, he is interested. Uh, we've set up a, or we found a way that we'll be able to buy the product um, efficiently and hopefully economically. Um, so really where we're at right now is what we were just talking about a few minutes ago. We think we're going to need some outside help from our consultant to work with Keith, not to do the physical work, but to make sure we're getting the right products and we, we don't have an issue with ballasts or anything else. So we think the involvement that we need from the outside is relatively minimal. So that's where the LED project stands right now. Either anybody else on the committee want to add anything to that, Jeff or Master Bill? I captured it, my understanding. Yes. I have a question. Are, is there a need to change any of the fixtures? in addition to the bulbs and the bows. That's separate work that yeah. will be addressed, that will have to be addressed at a different time. Okay, mm -hmm. that's yeah. okay. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get the majority of the bang for the buck by doing what we're planning on <coughs> doing. Excuse me. Most public areas and staff areas that are simple <coughs> bulb switch outs can yeah. be done. Mm -hmm. So that, that project continues and um, Obviously, we've been delayed a little bit because we couldn't get people to bid on it. Right. So, all right. That's the last committee report. So, one general yes. And Julie, when the contractor comes to do anything outside or inside the building, they have a tendency to put their cars or truck on the north side of that. I saw them last week when you were not here. Um, this uh, contractor who was doing something on the uh, cleaning the bushes and other thing, they parked on the north side of the fourth one of the truck. I mean, that is the um, important places for our patron to come. Okay. Could you make it possible whenever you are giving a contract to them, make it sure they park on the south side? Absolutely. Because the last time when we were uh, taking care of our parking lot, <coughs> that time also they put, put it the cars there, trucks there. Right. I will do that. Yep, that's our um, landscaping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, landscaping. Right. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Okay. If not, we have reached the second of two opportunities for public comment. In order to hear all citizen comments at a reasonable hour, the board requests that speakers respect the five-minute time limit. It's not a question and answer session, therefore board members will not respond to questions. It is an opportunity to voice your thoughts with the board. <coughs> Seeing no one coming forward, uh, we will move on to matters for board action. So there are two policies that I'm bringing to you, and it literally is just an age change in both of them. Um, we received information um, from the state, which we follow, and you now have to be 14 um, in order to volunteer through the library, through any, through any organizations. They are watching these types of things very closely. In fact, Marcia is the one who helps coordinate that through our HR department and through the state to make sure we have to get work permits, all kinds of things just for volunteering at the library. Uh, these kids have to show the hours that they're, they're using outside of school work. And so the only change to both policies, which is um, public policy P14 volunteers and um, the employee handbook policy for volunteers, pages 37 to 39 and 40 to 42, is that we're changing the language students were getting rid of entering into seventh grade or 12 and going to must be 14 years of age. I didn't think you would need to wait until the month of May, and if we could approve this, this helps us because we're starting to get our teenagers interested in summer reading if, if there's a... Have we had many volunteers that would no longer qualify to be volunteers? We have, yeah. Unfortunately, we, I mean, there are going to be some students that will have to turn away. Um, I, we're looking into some way of, of maybe working it out, but it's, I mean, this is, this is coming from the state, so we, there's nothing we can do. 
In fact, we were we were following it better than some other organizations, and we've let them know, you know, that this is happening. So we're we're all in compliance when we make this change. Mm -hmm. Are you restricted for the number of hours a 14-year-old can work per day? It's not work; it's volunteering. Okay. Yeah. Are you restricted? <coughs> the combination yeah. of work time or volunteer time plus school time. Right, and they can't go over a certain time during the day too. They can't go past I think seven o'clock, isn't it? it is. yes. Yeah, it's seven o'clock for those who work. Yeah, because we have fourteen-year-olds who serve in our um, restaurants, yep. and the residents <coughs> are still eating, and all fourteen-year-olds leave. Yep, <laughs> yep. I know. I have the same thing with my son from last year. So yes. yeah, and they're pretty strict about those things. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. But volunteer also is a limited amount of time, but not necessarily the number of hours. I, I think it might it's be a combination three hours of hours for fourteen year olds who work. It, it's a combination of hours with school and volunteering. It, it, it is. Yeah. Thank you. So they report to the school that they are working as a volunteer? They're just volunteering. Yeah, they have to get a. They actually have to get a work permit through the school to okay. show that they're doing it, and then someone has to give it to them. Okay. And <coughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of paperwork <laughs> for volunteering, unfortunately. Yeah. But it's safety. Yeah. It is mm -hmm. absolutely, and so that no one's being taken advantage of in terms of their time. Mm -hmm. So I understand it. So I'm looking for um, a motion. Yeah. If you any move any up. other comments on these two, or anyone want to make a move? Move a motion. A, move approval of the changes of public policy P14. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Do we have two things there? Yeah, there's the employee one yep. too. Please do that one separate. A motion to approve changes to employee handbook policy volunteers. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Okay, the last one is what we started to discuss earlier. And if I understand. If I understand this right, what you're requesting is that the board approve the expenditure of 2250 um, for work as needed um, up to that amount for the retrofit project. Yes, so it's a not to exceed 2250. Mm -hmm. Yes, and obviously, if we approve that, you will then coordinate and manage right. the work with yes. the Luminar. Right. Any and that, that's barring the punch list and everything that trust of, Trustee right. Verma already brought up. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is uh, 150 into 15 hours. How about the reimbursable? He's asking the reimbursable also. If he charges you for the reimbursable, how you will pay him? In terms of mileage and things like that, is yeah. that what you? Yeah, we'll handle that in a different. So that includes 2250. No, that'll be a different line item. I can do that separately out of a mileage line a different item. Different account. Mm -hmm. And that's the only difference. That's all we've seen is mileage and actual contracted work. <coughs> yep. Okay. Any other discussion on this? I just want to iterate that doing this project, we knew from the onset that there were going to be surprises and it was going to be much more difficult, much more complex, much more sophisticated, much more costly. <coughs> than we could anticipate. And that, I think, is the story of any organization that has, has shifted to lead. And so um, I watch it at Fox Run. I mean, everything has cost more. Mm -hmm. Will this cost more, though, if uh, this is work is being done internally? We don't know yet. Don't we, know. Because okay. so I just got some figures of how many hours he thinks it'll take Keith, you know, based on calculating how much time it takes to change a bulb and move it and things like that and then the time frame he'll help us with the time frame as well as helping us with determining purchasing which I don't know purchasing costs yet um, to get them but we do have a place to purchase through through the city um, we are able to go um, through uh, a site that they have and they were able to check for us and we can actually purchase these this equipment or these these materials and like a contractor right, right? that's already through yeah okay, it's cool. already been approved mm -hmm. yeah I think we'd like to see a, I'll call it a rough budget if you will oh absolutely I won't labor pull a trigger on any of this until we have some idea and that's what I'm hoping Carl is going to help us with because 
I mean, the time itself plus, um, you know, the cost of, of the lighting itself, I don't even know right now what, what the bulbs cost per bulb yet. I mean, I would expect it to be less. I, I well, I hope it's because it's going to be yes. on yes. us. Yes. Yes. Once, right. Once, once you've moved in. Mm -hmm. so the right. only reason it may not be is if they had really low-cost labor allocated to this project. And I don't think we saw that. I think we were surprised by the labor line when we saw yeah. just the one bid that came in. So, yeah. yeah. So, and all, but all we're, all we're asking for here is approval to, if the project proceeds that we would um, work with Illuminar up to a, a limited amount. So moved. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? It was unanimous. Okay, we have come to the adjournment part. Anything else before we go? <laughs> Well, we just have to say this is your last meeting, uh, President. I'll be back. Oh, right. oh, 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 meeting of Bill Waller into the um, you know, officers' camp. So um, thank you. Is your well, leave? You've done a great job. Thank you. I and I agree. I think it was Bill that mentioned that there is value to rotating people through positions. Everybody has a different perspective. Um, it's also educational to whoever fills that role. Some perhaps more than others. Um, but I, I think it's good practice. So we have a couple of people that maybe next year we'll be able to to slot in there somewhere. Yes. <laughs> we had to call her, but I, I asked her last time. She said no. <laughs> well, it, it's been an honor to be part of it. Yes. So thank you so much. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor, aye. 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 So moved. Thank you, everybody. Great. <laughs> I'll second.